Welcome back. Today we're working on this Yard Machines push mower. And I just picked this up. It comes with a broken pull rope. I didn't get the rope with it. But I did have this rope that I saved from something else. So we're going to see about putting this rope on here. This top was already off. So we're going to need to count how many times we have to wind that up to put this rope on so it pulls it in. So the rope goes up there to the handle, down to there. That's about how much rope's going to be sticking out. And then I coiled this rope up about the size of the pulley in there that it gets wrapped around. And this is about four times around. So we're going to take this cover off and we're going to wind that up four times. And hopefully that's, maybe I'll go five and that should be enough to pull the rope in and keep it, keep it snug. These screws were already out. I've already had this top off of here and now this comes right off and in here is the starter mechanism so when you pull that rope it's going to turn this way and when you pull on it these this piece here this white colored piece is going to it's going to go down it's going to engage with this starter cup here now, when you do take this off, you want to look and make sure you have all four of these, that none of these are broken off. I've already had them where these points were broke or this whole thing cracked. And then this is going to pull off center and it's going to wobble really bad. So if you see that any of these are broke, you need to look up the model number on the mower or on the side of the engine and order a new one of those. Now, this has a couple clips on it here where I believe this whole thing will just come right out. But we're going to fix it inside the cover here so we don't have to worry about the spring. We don't have to worry about getting this back together because I've already had these where this didn't fit right. Where somebody took this out and it just didn't go well. So we're going to try to not do that. So what you want to look for, this part right here, this is where your rope needs to go in to this part. So it's going to get wound around here, but it needs to stick through there so that you can tie the knot in it. So when you pull on the rope, it's going to come out this way and wind up the spring. So we're going to turn it that same way. So right now the spring is pretty much relaxed. So we're going to go around five times. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And now there's a good amount of tension. But that spring will still wind up farther. So we're not going to. We're not going to jam up the spring because right here is where the rope's going to stop rotating it. So if we go farther, we, we still have some space to go. Now we need to keep that right there. So this here, so this piece here where your string is going to come through is lined up with where it goes out of the housing. So we need to put something there. We're going to put this screwdriver through here keep this from rotating. We put the screwdriver right there, we can let go. And the string is, that hole is really, really close. If you look in here, you won't be able to see it, but there's, the hole is in there. Now you wanna cut this, and you could even heat this up a little bit to melt this, to make sure that it's, not frayed on the end. So we're going to feed this in here. See if I can get it to come through the other hole. And there it goes, right through. So we're going to pull that through there. Now from the factory, there's a special way that they tie these. And I've done it already. Sometimes I can get it right. I don't know if this will be one of those times. But there's a way that they do it so that it doesn't come undone. Ever. And that's going to be pretty close right there. We're going to make that nice and tight.
And one of the reasons they do it a special way is so it don't take up a whole lot of space. So we're gonna cut the extra off of here. It has to fit in a little spot. Now we pull this back through and that's where it needs to sit down in there. So I'm gonna pull on this, take the screwdriver out. And this should pull just about all that rope in there. Now, if it doesn't, the older ones, it's pretty easy to, to wind that around again. You don't have all this plastic cover in the way. But it's pulling the rope into there. And the rope is going to end up there at the handle. So the rope's going to be out here. So it should be able to hold that rope against that, that handle up there pretty well. So that's, that's the part where you put the rope in. So now I want to talk about this auto choke a little bit. So hopefully you can see this. Now this one here is on the cover of the air filter. It says no prime, no choke. Right here. It says no prime, no choke, ready start. You just pull the rope and it's running. That's pretty much how this works. So this part down here, this here is your throttle control. This here is your actual choke lever right here. This is what opens and closes the choke. So you got this little spring that holds the choke closed for when you pull the rope, you know, it's not going to pull much air. It's going to force it to pull fuel through the carburetor so that it's rich when it's cold. So, you know, it has that spring to hold it shut. And once it starts, the governor is going to pull it, pull the throttle lever back like that. It's going to force his choke open a little bit. Okay, so right there the choke is closed. But once you get up, this anywhere here is going to be in your operating range. It's going to hold that choke open enough for it to run without, without fouling the spark plug. Now over here, this is your automatic part. This here goes down into the muffler. There's a little, a little coil of wire in here. And right now it's spring-loaded, closed. But once the exhaust gets hot, heats up this metal... This this here is going to go over like this. So once it's warmed up, that goes like that. Pushes on this this lever, pushes on your choke lever here. And once it's hot, after it's running for probably just a few minutes, it's going to hold that choke all the way open. And once it cools down, once it stops running, you let it cool down, then it's going to go back to the way it normally is. So it's possible. I, I've seen where people have trouble restarting this they'll run it for a minute or two and this will hold your choke open because it's still warm and uh you know they'll start it and, and run it a minute or something like that enough that this gets hot but the in inside of the engine's not hot and uh it doesn't want to start because the choke's open all the way so th that may never happen to you but it is a possibility if you get the timing just right but th that's basically how it works you know you got this spring so, it, you know, it keeps your choke closed. And once it starts up, you know, that goes like that. You get a little bit of air is able to go through. So, if you have trouble starting this, like you have to really, really pull, but it runs okay once it's running, you need to look and make sure that this spring is still on here. Because if this is sitting over like that, it's going to be very hard to start when it's cold. Or if you get a lot of grass in here, there was a little bit in here. But when it's cold, this needs to be all the way like that to where if you take your air filter cover off and look in there, you'll see the brass choke and that needs to be closed. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard to start when it's cold. So that's basically how they get to where you don't have to prime this. You don't have to put extra fuel into the engine. It has a choke that works automatically as long as that spring is there. And then, you know, this here is just to make it open all the way once it's warmed up. Your throttle is going to open it enough to run. But if you go into high grass before this is warmed up, you know, you're, you're not getting your full airflow. So the throttle is going to open to suck more gas and air in, and it's not necessarily going to get enough gas or not get enough air. So it may cause it to run a little bit rough or smoke just a little bit. And, you know, this cover comes right off. 
And this already has a nice clean air filter in it. So we're going to see. I, I may uh, take the car, take the gas tank off and drain it because uh, the previous owner said that it sat for a, a season or two. But first we're going to try it just to see see how it starts up. So we're going to put this cover back on. And these screws here, you don't want to lose these. These are special screws. Now, luckily, these were all in here. Somebody took this cover off, but they put it back on. And they, they started the screws. They were all loose, but at least they were in there. Because you, you need all three of these to hold this on. So when you pull the rope, it stays centered on that starter cup in there. Otherwise, you know, if it's not straight and lined up, it's all plastic. It's going to break. Then you're going to have to go order more parts to get it back together. And these are just 5 16 or 8 millimeters. That's basically the same size. So whichever socket set you happen to pull out, standard or metric, if they're separate ones, that's the size you need. So now we're going to straighten out the handle here. This handle's made to fold up pretty nice, but you do got to take these two bolts out to do it. And this one was in the, the wrong direction. Maybe they put it together the right way, but both the bolts were facing the same direction, so one was right and one was wrong. But they have this little shoulder here, and that's meant to go through the outside of the handle. And what you get here is a little bit of height adjustment. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Without them really needing to machine too many parts. So that both the screws go in from the outside. So that that shoulder can go through the outside of the handle. Now we're going to need another wrench. Hold the one on the outside. So the one on the outside is 9 16 so the one on the inside is 7 16 so We're going to tighten these up real good. I've seen a lot of times where these are just not tight. People put them on by hand. And then their handle is just flopping around all the time and wearing out. So this is something that really, really should be tight. And then at the bottom of the handle, you have these two screws here. And these sometimes don't get tight because they just screw into this plastic. But you need to make sure that they're both in there. See, that, one's, that one feels like it's not going to get tight. But they just screw into plastic. What that does, that keeps the handle down in, in this housing here. So, when they're at the factory, I don't even know if they screw these in. They might just tap them in with a hammer. But this whole thing is, is for quick assembly, where they can just throw it together right away. And probably these are not in when it's in the box. These might get put in at the store. That way it, it ships more compact. So now we're going to get the rope up here and put it through this holder. So we'll get some pulled out there. And you need to watch how you do this so that it goes straight through. Usually you can just pop it in like that. But now when you pull on it, it's going to go straight through there. So this is a little frayed. I thought I had new string, but I don't. But that's going to last a while yet. I may get a new roll and, and change this before it leaves. So now we're ready to get it down and see if it'll start. So I probably should drain that gas tank first, but I'm going to try it anyway. Well, 
was way more than I needed to put in there. Alright, so we're going to give this a little fuel that will burn. A piece of carburetor is gummed up inside from the sitting. If you've seen my other video about replacing a carburetor on these, I like to use the gum out carbon choke cleaner. Because they'll actually run on this. And it's not as bad for them as starting fluid. All right, well, here we see that this will start, and I'm going to spray it again and start it, but this is going to need a carburetor cleaning, so I'm going to have to take the carburetor off. That's going to be in a separate video. This video is already getting long enough, so if something like this helps you out, please like and subscribe, and we'll keep doing stuff like this. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so now we're going to have to put it back up and work on the carburetor.